So in case you don't know where you're at, Sushim. Return home should never be below a three. <laughs> Just a double press for motor starts. Press and hold the lock button to take off. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> With like the joystick, you look up and down. And when I fly forward, yeah, I get the, the control circle. So if you're not flying forwards, you cannot yaw. So a little bit of forward motion and yeah, then you can yaw. Okay. Ah, okay. While you use the joystick to strafe. You can also turn around. Hello, Shin. <laughs> oh, I can, I can see you. That's an option you can set in the goggles menu. 2D or 3D view. Uh, two separate cameras for two separate screens. It's a bit weird, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, Tom Tom, how do you like the see-through mode? <laughs> Um, try, it's, try to walk in a straight line. <laughs> it's nice that you can see through, but it's really narrow. I just see this part of my vision. Like yeah. now I see you, That's the now thing. I don't see you. Yeah. Now I see you. <laughs> uh, but it looks funny though. <laughs> yeah, I can see through somehow. And with a double tap. I'm back in the drone. Warning though, if you use the see-through mode, the goggles will immediately stop the DVR recording and will not start it again. So if you continue to fly and crash, you don't have footage. That's a big oversight in my opinion. Backing up and left right is reversed. Makes sense. Backing up really slow. Do I have obstacle avoidance in the back? No, I don't think he would prevent me from crashing in the back. I can see beginners jumping into this drone with this image transmission and with this controller having a lot of fun. Oh. Speaking of having fun, <laughs> the fun ended here. <laughs> because 120 meters of altitude. Oh, go f yourself. <laughs> okay, so far to the scenery surfing. However, I found out later that you can go into the goggles menu, safety, and there you can set the audit limit up to 500 meters of altitude. <laughs> Our speed is not bad. Let's see how quickly we drain the battery if, if flying full speed all the time. <laughs> Could I pretend this is a joystick? Yeah, hey, that's, that's the right thing to do. Just rest it on your lap and pretend this is a fighter plane. Tom Cruise. And now let's do some commented beauty shots. All of them are in 4K60 with rock steady on, no post-production, no color grading, no nothing. So you can see how good the light handling is. It's phenomenal. The sensor catches a lot of details. Maybe YouTube codec will eat it up. You can ascend down to the trees. So really good for exploration. <laughs> you can film fun stuff. Real estate shoots. Even drift. Grave digger? No. It's, it's the hole for a tree and yeah, I helped her, really. <laughs> Once again, real estate shots of beautiful real estate. Performs good in the darkness as well. And it's really good around tight corners, tight spaces, so I felt very comfortable, all with the weird joystick. Can get speedy outside. And it's just, yeah, it was a blast to fly. And I miss it, because I had to hand it over to TomTom, Tom, which you've seen earlier. Can fly quite precise, and you always so see those branches. It's good for roof inspection as well which will help me in my job, <laughs> or could help me. And this is some sunset, or almost after sunset flying. You see where the sensor struggled a bit maybe, but it was really good considering how dark it was. And some challenging shots against the sun. Nowhere I used any ND filters or any additional help, so all coming directly off the sensor, being stabilized by Rocksteady itself. 
even try to dive a bit. On the dives it's weird that not the drone is under your full control, it's in angle mode and just the gimbal looks down. And here is another example of the dynamic range. Look under the sun, the, it just looks phenomenal in my opinion. The castle, being able to back up. You can adjust the backup speed, by the way. And coming back after a quite long round trip here. Yeah, it was just... I had no issues, no video dropouts whatsoever. It just made me smile, yeah. Hello? The landing was nice and easy to be done because you can really tilt down a lot and see where you're flying at. Long pressed the orange button. So in comparison to the motion controller for the DJI FPV, only use it rarely. This is for sure an improvement because you have the joystick. For an FPVer like me, I do this since 2008, uh, that's weird. For someone that takes this as his first drone of course, that's super fun. Really easy to learn and that's what they want to do with it. Turn right now. Whoa. <laughs> Ah, but it's weird though. Yeah, it's not so hard oh, to get used to it. I really enjoyed the safety features like you cannot bump into the ground. How much control do I have myself? It's like preventing me from go further down than these 30 centimeters. This is super weird but it works and that's really good for your beginners. So in theory you cannot crash into the ground. Still, if I was to buy the Avatar 2, I would initially buy it with the RC remote. Ah, but now the prices should be on. I don't know the prices yet. Okay, let's switch the battery and try some more fun stuff. 37% and about 10 minutes flying. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same as on the DJI FPV, the potato drone. I think they promised 19 minutes and you would get 9 to 12 minutes. This is quite good on such a 3 inch Cinewhoop, 12 minutes with that small of a battery, no complaints. You will get around 15 minutes if you fly slow and steady. So of course like always on the DJI drones you should get the fly more package because just one battery is stupid. Three packs are done in half an hour. <laughs> you could have a portable charger and while you are on the go charge the next batteries. Now this performance of O4 is phenomenal. Guys, I was at 60 Mbits all the time whilst flying behind this hill here. In between my flights I chatted with my friends and maybe the hem file works <laughs> on the Avatar 2. Yes and no, Shim from the future here. Apparently with the newer firmware, if you are in the CE region, you are locked to CE mode. If you are in the FCC region, you can still use the hem file and have full power. For the CE region, check out Ian. Medstack's review, you will be able to use a little app, pay a little money and then you have the FCC mode. You know that you are in CE mode if you cannot manually choose a channel. I got my Spectron RF with me and the laptop. I will try to find out for you what kind of frequencies are used and how wide are they. We're looking at 1 to 6 gigahertz. Turn on the goggles first. What do the goggles do? Yeah, they search on the 2.4 GHz band. Roughly 2.4 and 2.480. I turned on the motion controller. This range here, motion controller, 4.8 to 4.955. And it's very narrow, narrow in bandwidth. As you see, these little bits and pieces here that it transmits. So cool, that's the motion RC. Goggles motion controller and now I turn on the avatar. What changes now? Yeah. Now you see this is quite broad of a band. This is video for sure. It's nothing too much of a change but weirdly enough we have another band used here. 3-3 three, three to 3-4. Three, 
they're taking up all the space that they can get. So once again, these are the goggles. This is now, since the avatar is turned on. This is the motion controller. 5.7 to 5.8, 30, yeah, almost 100 megahertz. And this is, ta-ta, 60 megahertz mode on the video channel. I'm here in the widest view and yeah, not a lot of RF devices can do this. <laughs> you see all at the same time. 10 minutes before launch there is a new version of DJI Fly. So just in case you're confused, you hook up your phone with the most current DJI Fly app installed via the USB cable to the goggles and also turn on the drone and the controllers. They are all bound from factory and once they all find each other you can activate them. Okay guys, I gotta give you my impressions of flying the Air 3 with the goggles 3 and the Motion RC3. And it was awesome, it was a blast. I mean, first of all, the Air 3 is faster than the Avatar in the air. I could fly it to 18 meters per second. Technically faster in sport mode. If you fly the Avatar in the manual mode with the normal RC, then it's faster, I think. For covering larger distances, the sport mode on the Air 3 felt really good. And the head tracker is so unreal. Although it has jerky movements every now and then, if you fly like really fast forward, and look 90 degrees sidewards, uh, the gimbal freaks out a bit, so it's not perfect, but awesome what kind of footage you can capture circling around uh, a castle or something like this. So that's something that's a bit hard to do with the RC. Not all of the settings work yet. For example, I cannot switch the lenses, so the three times lens accessible via the goggles would really be cool. Don't want to spy on somebody, but oh, there's a there's a sailplane. I didn't see my buddy over there flying the sailplane. Yeah, anyhow, it really has been a pleasure flying the Air 3 with the Goggles 3. Maybe if you're not in for the Avatar, but if you have a Mini 4 Pro or the Air 3, there's a new firmware update since a few days that they support the Goggles 3. Here's where you can switch to the Air 3, Mini 4 Pro or the Avatar mode. And uh, I think you need the Motion Controller 3, but that's only 89 bucks. So uh, I'm considering this now. Just found another little design feature. These diopters, like on the twist, you can adjust the diopters. And by sliding, you will adjust your IPD. Press it in and then turn it. It will be tight. So it no longer just IPD nor the diopters. So it's a really clever design and I feel stupid for not finding this out sooner because I complained about them being easy to reset. Let us be a little packing size comparison. Goggles 3 versus the goggles version 2. Would this fit in here? Yeah. This is actually without battery and this is with battery. It doesn't destroy your lenses. It can sit here as a lens protector as well. And make it very compact. On the other side, this one here, fits in my drawer just fine. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe if you aren't, if you found my channel today. And if you're really considering to buy this drone or the goggles or the controller or whatnot, you can use the code RCSHIM3 to get a 3% discount at Globeflight, uh, which makes sense if you're in Europe. That helps me because I get a little affiliate money from that and doesn't cost you any extra. You always get honest opinions on this channel and I think I didn't praise the Avatar 2 too much. In Until that, see you next time. Bye for now and happy flying.